Drill Baby Drill to Maximize Research Benefits. Our computer screens aren't really very large, but they connect us to a vast and ever-growing repository of data. There are text pages, images, audio, video, interactives, forms, and so much more, all available 24-7. The Google blog noted that in 2008, its search engine to find new content hit a milestone, one trillion unique URLs on the web at once. And the web certainly hasn't stopped growing fast. However, speed of development, ease of access, and quantity of information available does not confer quality. During research, especially academic research, you must focus on quality. The types of sites range from personal, often called vanity pages, to professionally published subscription-only sites like CQ Researcher and InfoTrack. We used to teach that one could use a page's extension code as an indicator of credibility. And there are some extensions which can provide at least a clue to the potential quality of a website. However, one can no longer say a .com site is a business, a .edu site provides credible information, or a .org site is a legitimate special interest organization. The explosive growth of the web during a time when the number of site extensions was limited resulted in many crossover domains. For instance, my own website lindarecord.com is clearly not a business site, even though it has a commerce designation. And schools routinely provide private space for their faculty to publish whatever they like, even if it's a bunch of hooey. Some extensions are limited. For instance, only schools can use .edu, and only governments, city, state, national, can use .gov, New site extensions are being added all the time. There are country codes such as .uk, .us, .au, .cn, and .nz, and specialty codes such as .tv, .am, and .mobi. What all of this means is each of us needs to develop a variety of skills to evaluate the quality of a source. Simple formulas don't work very well anymore. The first layer of useful skills is where to find academic quality information. Can you imagine a trillion pages? Neither can I. So how about a hundred dollar bill? How large would a stack of hundreds need to be to reach one trillion dollars? The image above gives a hint. Remember the number of web pages reached more than a trillion over two years ago, and that a web page can be quite a bit larger than a hundred dollar bill, and that one would need at least 100 pages to represent the hundred dollar bill in the graphic. Next thing you know, the stack by which the guy is standing is 100 times larger. Well, the sheer size of the surface web gets overwhelming pretty quickly. But as amazing as the content of the public web can be, it's estimated the deep web may be as much as ten times larger. And that's where the highest quality information lurks, awaiting discovery. Laura Cohen of Internet Tutorials writes, When we refer to the deep web, we are usually talking about the following. The content of databases. Databases contain information stored in tables created by such programs as Access, Oracle, SQL Server, and MySQL. Information stored in databases is accessible only by query. In other words, the database must somehow be searched and the data retrieved and then displayed on a web page. Non-text files, such as multimedia, 
images, software, and documents in formats such as portable document format. Content available on sites protected by passwords or other restrictions. Some of this is fee-based content, such as subscription content paid for by libraries and available to their users based on various authentication schemes. Special content not presented as web pages, such as full text articles and books, and dynamically changing updated content. So, if only a tiny fraction of the best information is publicly available on the web, how do you get to the really good stuff? Well, there are at least three fairly easy skills you can develop. One, rely more on campus library subscriptions. The campus library subscribes to services which provide ready access to professional materials. Learn how to use each database and you will be more than one step above those who haven't learned how to use them. Two, learn how to drill down rather than surf the net. If you put the word statistics or database before a keyword search term, you will likely discover credible information repositories that cannot be reached using standard search techniques. Try it. Enter the search term marijuana and then enter database marijuana or statistics marijuana to see the difference in hits. Learn how to use Boolean operators to refine your surface web searches. Here's a link to a very useful handout on how to use Boolean operators. www.internettutorials.net slash boolean.asp Thank you.